welcome to the Bookkeeper 247 podcast, where we explore the intersection of faith and culture through the lens of Christian hip hop. I'm your host, Daryl Kemp. And today we have with us Christian rapper, Lexley Naverna, who is making waves in the industry with her style and powerful message. Lexley Naverna, welcome to the show. What's poppin'? What's up, everyone? (laughs) Thank you for having me. Uh, No problem. Glad you was able to stop by and chop it up with us. So first question is always an icebreaker. Who is Lexley Nirvana? Okay, Lexley Nirvana, she's a Christian hip hop artist. Um, I also do reggaeton and rap music um, from Texas. Um, I've been doing this this past year. I've been trying to do more Spanish. Uh, more into the reggaeton side. Um, when I started Christian, uh, the Christian hip hop, I I was just focused on on doing hip hop and rap. But I've been exploring more, trying to grow more in my craft, and what God has been doing is is just amazing. Amen, amen. Can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing and how it influenced the music you make today? So. Uh, I I actually didn't know that Christian hip hop like existed um, at first when I got saved. It was after I uh, I mean I always like I always enjoyed like rap and hip hop. Like I used to listen to to that like Eminem and and T Pain and all those uh, back in the day when I wasn't a Christian. And um, I, I I always liked that and and I would like learn the lyrics of the songs and I would rap to them and stuff like that. But I never thought I wanted to do this like. <laughs> so once I became uh, I became a Christian, I gave my life to the Lord. Um, I just started getting like a like a desire to start writing, to start. Um, but I didn't know like that that even Christian hip hop existed. Um, I was just like so uh, solely on like whatever the radio will play or uh, what is it called CCM. I mean, I have nothing against it. I I really enjoyed it too. But when I found out about Christian hip hop uh, through a friend. I was so like, this rocked my world. I was like, oh my gosh, this actually exists? Like, wow. <laughs> um, so after that, yeah, I, I started uh, slowly writing. And um, yeah, that's how, it, that's how it started. Can you remember your first Christian hip hop song or when you discovered the space? What was you listening to? Um, well, it's because I had heard about it like on the TV, on TV. But I, I never really saw someone like an artist that actually would be putting out music often. It was just like, oh, this is just one song. Oh, that's the only song they have. Like, so when I, uh, when I met this friend in high school, he, he showed me Lacrae, and okay. I was like, oh my gosh, Jesus music and like, um, the, the like those all albums and stuff, like old albums. So I was just like, oh my gosh, like I can actually listen to him, like. So he was one of the first ones that I actually like, like heard. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, since we've been in the space, I know Lecrae gets a lot of pushback a lot of times, but his influence over the Christian hip hop space is just amazing when I when I think about it. So that's that's great. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us about your experience coming to the United States as a child? So I, I was born in Mexico. Um, I was there for seven years, well, six years. And then I moved when I was seven to uh, the United States. And it was it was really hard to, um, I didn't know any English, nor even the numbers or the alphabet, anything. So um, I thought they were gonna, they were gonna lower me from my grade. But thankfully God, like um, I was, I was, I came when I was in second grade and um, it was it was very hard, but I remember like the teacher would try to help me and stuff. I remember she one time she uh, complained to my mom that I would ask a lot of questions, and um, the homework was hard, and and it was just a little bit hard to adjust. I mean, even as a kid. Um, but thank God, like I was just so grateful that they didn't lower me from my grade that I was supposed to be. And then um, from there, I I just uh, I well I was I we moved again. And then in that in that new school, they had more like bilingual. They had both. So I was I was placed in a in a bilingual class. They would do mostly Spanish, <laughs> but um, I would do ESL classes. 
throughout uh, elementary and middle school and then high school it was it was all plain english like i already knew more mm -hmm. amen did you face any discrimination or prejudice after coming to the united states mm, no i don't think i did no i don't think i did because mostly here where where we, where i live it's mo it's mostly hispanic people yeah. amen some of the i know a lot of naysayers and some of the naysayers say that uh close the border don't let nobody in this that and the third and i always tell the naysayers you never know what the living conditions are for people coming to america mm -hmm. is it a, any kind of message you would say to the naysayers about that it's because you can i feel like like those kinds of things that they say is because they have a perspective of something like mm -hmm. because of, of something i don't know they don't really know exactly so they're just like <laughs> talking right um but you, not everybody that comes to the united states or to america like it's not a bad person like it's not a bad person like they have something to bring and and it can be a good thing you know a good change and and growth so um, I just really believe that you can't stay on a, on a box. Like you have to be open and, and explore and see and, and um, these kinds of people that that they that, that can really help the nation, you know. Amen. I read an article before we move on one time that says America throws away enough food in a year to feed a third world country. Oh, I think I heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what come when I hear the naysayers. I just pray for them and let them keep on talking. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. What what unique challenges have you faced as a female artist in a male dominated space of Christian hip hop? Well, I feel like um maybe when I started like just like getting accepted or like people taking me serious and like what I was doing um sometimes I, I would tell them like oh can you give me this and they, they would just take forever or they would just do it like very lightly like they really didn't want it to help um it is a, a male uh more male dominated <laughs> CHH right but I'm glad that slowly we've been uh, getting more women to actually step out and 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 proclaim the faith in God through this type of music. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like, uh, uh, yeah, like sometimes they just won't take you serious. I feel like that's one of the main things that I I faced when I first started. That's right. Does it, does it complicate anything? Cause I know you've been doing shows and stuff like that. Does it, does being a female in this space, does it interfere with touring or doing shows or anything like that like what, what do you what do you mean like uh like i've read a thread on twitter that said that the women that that are in christian hip-hop like the big tours that they do with like bigger artists or something like that where they have to spend the night in hotels or or do bus trips it's hard for you know for the for the females to be on the bus or the hotel or anything like that had you ran into any of them challenges not not yet not yet i haven't done like a like a full-on tour uh mostly of the of the shows that i've done is here locally um for now but um yeah i be i believe those challenges would come <laughs> within, within like because it's like males and, and you're maybe the, the only girl or something but um just just being uh just having trust in God that everything will work out, you know. Amen. What advice would you give to the other aspiring female Christian hip hop artists who may be facing some of the challenges we're speaking about? I really uh, believe that um, just having, like knowing what, why are you doing it? Like, why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? Um, in this case, we're doing it for God. We want to honor him and we want to share our testimonies through our music and everything that we go through, give, uh, glorify him. And um, I feel like that is the only thing that's going to keep like helping you to keep going with all these uh, things that come up. 
because it's not sometimes it's not just that there's other things that come up within this within this i i feel like this is a a journey like it's a journey there's so many obstacles that come up come with it so you really have to know why are you doing it and who are you doing it for amen amen and you are listening to the bookkeeper 247 podcast with our special guest lexley nirvana when we come back after these messages we will be hearing lexi nirvana's testimony yo yo man what's good it's your boy shine on me we locked into the bookkeeper 24 7 podcast listen make sure you tap into the new project the curse of the prophet is out right now on all streaming platforms lock in for me you hear me so many bad decisions still facing consequences depression crept in and left me with you disturb man going off the handle like hotel do not disturb signs nothing came do you need production for your podcast or YouTube video? Look no further. We got you. Do you want to do album reviews? Start your own podcast? Write your own devotionals? Look no further. We got you. Do you want to report Christian news from hip hop to book reviews as well as related topics in our culture? Look no further. We got you. By partnering with us, we can do all these things for the glory of God. Email us at thebookkeeper247 at gmail.com and let's start making strides to influence the culture from a godly perspective. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the Bookkeeper 247 podcast, family, where we are sitting down and chopping it up with Lexley Nirvana. As we move into this segue, I love to hear testimony, and so do our listeners. Talk to us about the transition of unsaved, Lexley Nirvana, to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I, I grew up in church. Um, my mom would take us to church. My dad still doesn't go, but we're still praying for him. And um, he, and then, uh, like, I, I enjoyed church. Like, it was good. Like, we would learn and stuff but I never really understood it too well. Um, I know I, I had given my life to the Lord, but I still didn't really understand it as a young, as a young girl. I think I was 12 or something. And, um, but then after, after a while, like, I mean, I, I, they, I grew up with like the principles of knowing the, like the word, right? So like we wouldn't cuss or anything like that. We would like um, try to go to church and stuff, but as you're growing up, like you need to really make God like your God, not your parents, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I, I, I was just go with the flow, and I started to grow up and just wanted to do my own thing, um, <laughs> doing my own thing, feeling kind of like lonely. I want a boyfriend <laughs> mm -hmm. as a teenager, right? And um, I remember I, I had told God like I was like, oh, I'm gonna wait. But then I was like, after like middle school and stuff like that, I was just like, nah, like, it's just my own thing. I moved schools and I was like, oh no, like this uh, old Lexley is gone. This is the new Lexley, nobody knows me. I'm gonna do my own thing. So after high school, um, like in during high school, I was just like dating and doing this and that and, and not honoring God. I used to like to party and, and, and I, I never uh, would drink or smoke or any do drugs like that. Um, but because I kind of had like a little bit of fear of God in that sense, but then when I turned, when I was in junior, I was around 17, I remember, um, just feeling like, so like lonely and like going through so many relationships of like dating and heartbreak and just moving from guy to guy. And, and I remember my mom, she signed me up to this, uh, retreat that, that they were going to have in our church. And that day I actually had a quinceanera. I was going to go to a party and stuff and just be there and um, have fun. And I went and that's when I, when everything like just came and really resonated with me, everything that, that I was taught as a kid and everything, um, they just made it very like vivid and plain. And, and I remember I cried and I told God, like, God, like, I, it's like he told me like this is it like it's it's here or or not you know and I was like you know what like after so many times of like trying to to understand this like I finally get it and and I'm making that step like I'm I'm 
I'm already surrendering my life to you, um, trying to seek uh, love in, in the wrong places, right? And um, that day was like a very impactful to me. Um, and and it, it, it was just like, God, you can take it all. Like, this is, this is, like, I'm yours. And, and after that, just, I, I was just telling God, like, to help me see what my purpose was here on earth because I, I wanted to, to honor him. But all those problems and all those things that um, that I was going through, it's like he he just helped me like overcome and and just walk. It's like he gives you this power to um, to just keep going and 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 uh, I don't know. It's just it's, it's such a different experience. I remember. I remember. Amen. Amen. I always get the opportunity to talk to that one out there feeling like it's impossible to win. If you could talk to that person right now that's on the fence of accepting Christ and God's will for their life, what advice would you give them? Just come with whatever you have, whatever you're 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 troubling with, whatever your trials are, whatever you think you're not good enough, whatever you feel like it's it's pulling you down, like give it to him because he's the only one that's gonna help you through it he's the only one that's gonna that you're that that you're gonna see that this is this is for real like this is for real like this is not not a game like you're not playing around like oh i just feel this a little feeling today like this is for real and and i would i would really advise you to give it all to him because he loves you he wants you he died for you on that cross for a reason and you don't have to keep suffering and, and going through all this it's not that it's gonna be easy after that but you have god with you now and and anything is impossible with him everything's possible with him amen amen you are listening to the bookkeeper 247 podcast with our special guest lexley nirvana stay locked in as we'll be back after these messages we have a new way you can seed with the bookkeeper 247.com to help us grow. Head over to the website, click the merch button, and pick out our newly better quality design t-shirts. Enter the promo code behind the mic and get 10% off of your purchase. Also, you can help us grow by dropping a comment and sharing the podcast. Make sure you hit the subscription button to be notified for the most in-depth show in hip-hop with my hubby and your host, Daryl Kemp. This is Kyle Kemp from the bookkeeper247.com. Music represents our uniqueness, our freedom, and helps define who you are. Good music is art, expression, and good music is always personal. The Bookkeeper 24-7 understands the influence music has on our lives. So on our website, we have the best Christian music for the culture. If you'd like to submit your music or videos to our website, we have the link in the show notes. Now back to the most in-depth show in hip-hop with my dad on the Bookkeeper 24-7 podcast. Welcome back to the Bookkeeper 247 Podcast family, where we are sitting down and chopping it up with Lexley Nevada. Let's talk CHH. What are some of the positives and negatives of CHH? Um, well, the positives is that you can like really give all your testimony and, and and really share what God has been doing. And and that that's really, I mean, that's your ministry. That you can do um and then you're just growing and 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 doing god's calling as well in it um as a negative um what can i say <laughs> <laughs> i would say like um i know sometimes there's the like when they have more experience and when you're in when you are like a rookie and you're barely starting like just people actually giving you the opportunity mm-hmm. to start and, and 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 that can really affect you sometimes in in how you um how you how you're doing yeah how you're being a creative in, in your craft because um i mean when people just tell you something right like 
it's not like you have to really like kind of be strong and like maybe in, in, in critiquing and, and stuff like that. I know there's a lot of that right now, uh, critiquing music and, and it's out how are you going to take that? So mm-hmm. I really feel like, um, like j- just giving the opportunity and believing in people. Like you really need to be, like I was saying earlier, like you really need to believe in yourself and what God is calling you to do. That's going to help you to keep going because yeah, that's tough. I remember I, um, when I first started, like I would do a lot of critiques in my music, which has really helped me. But if you're not strong enough, like <laughs> it can really, like, it can really like knock you down. But um, I believe that's one of them. And um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that that can be tough because you got. Um, I don't believe in top tier artists. And, lower tier artists i believe that we're all on the same mission Mm -hmm. or we or we should be but i do understand that sometimes when you first get started that you're not as good as what you are now and where god is going to elevate you to be so the opportunities should come a little easier it seems like in the beginning yeah after you start uh, I think that would really help artists. But I know some artists, you know, that don't mind doing a feature with you. Don't, and and I think when we talk about critiquing, it should be done in love too, and not harshly. Mm-hmm. You ought to ask, be able to ask the Lord to give you the words to say to critique that artist, and then the artist ought to be able to say, Lord, help me take this critique as well if it's done in love yeah yep, so i could definitely That's see them perfect. challenge mm-hmm. yeah because mm. i've been doing this for for um a long time which is like what like 10 years or 11 years so i've been seeing like the growth and and how god is 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 moving but yeah like sometimes you just need to to yeah you have to be strong enough to take it but yeah i really like how you said like for them to say it out of love like to pray about that you know? That's right. Yeah. A- Amen. When did you know you were called to change lives for God in your music? So I was um, 19, I believe, 18 or 19, so around that age. Um, my friend, I remember she invited me to a ministry in prison that they were doing for inmates here in our here in our area. And at first I was just like, oh my gosh, like I've never done that. That's kind of scary. <laughs> That's kind of scary to, to go. And because um, I told her that I wanted to, to, I had like the desire to do rap music. And she's like, well, this will be a great opportunity. Like you can, you can actually share your song. And it was with some uh, older people. Like they had this other type of music and I was, and I was just going to do like a special. So I did that for like a, like a year. So it was, it was just a, an experience to actually be there because those people really need God. Like, in, and I could see it, like it was just so different and starting like that. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. Amen. Can you tell us more about your EP, For My King? So For My King, um, I released it, I believe it was in 2020. I'm not very sure. Yeah, I think it was 2020. Yes. And um, for that one, it's I am dedicated since this is my first like little project. I wanted to dedicate it to God. So I called it my for my king. And um, and that's how I did it. Also in the artwork, like it's a it's a letter, um, like a like writing a letter. And um, it's just my 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 songs. It, in in a small ep of of i think it's i believe it's like four, six or four <laughs> it's been a little while <laughs> but i have spanish and english on them and um i really i really i really hope you guys have listened to it but i do i do try to give uh, a lot of my my story through it yes so speaking of that how do you incorporate your mexican heritage into your music like um what do you, like what do you mean <laughs> like you're bilingual so what desire cuz you were speaking about this in the beginning of the interview how did god put it on your heart to incorporate 
you being bilingual into your music? I really feel like at first, when I first started, I just wanted to do plain English because I thought that's what it was all about. And and um, I remember, but slowly, like God had been working in my heart. And 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 I, I say it in one of the songs, like I felt like I was a little bit kind of like ashamed, like a little bit of shame of who I was, like, oh, people are not really going to accept me for who I am because, I mean, I'm not really from here. Like I was born over there. I mean, I grew up here now, right? But um. So I felt like I wasn't going to be accepted. So when I started doing my music, I was like, oh, it's not going to be plain English. But I feel like God has just been working in my heart of like, just be who you I created you to be. Don't be ashamed of that. Like people will, will, um, how do you say it? Like there, there's people like that, like you, like mm-hmm. there's people like that, like you, and they need to hear that and they need to hear what I've done in your life. So, um, I slowly been doing that and and incorporating the the Spanish, which I'm that's my, that's my native language, and I've gotten feedback that that sounds even better than my English. So mm. it's just how crazy how God works things out when we're just set on a, one on a, one mindset and um, and just being who you are. And that's how I've been doing in my incorporating both languages in in my songs. Amen. Tell us about your latest single, Tu Me Dices, featuring RMK. Okay, the Tu Me Dices featuring RMK, that song was, um, I went through a lot this past 2022. Um, it was just, it was just so crazy, like how everything started. Um, it started from like a, from like a heartbreak. And then after that, I went through all these trials of like, um, I had an incident with my dog, I had to go to the hospital and then I had, a, had to be another surgery procedure. And it was just like, what is going on? Like, I feel like I'm being so attacked this year. Like it's just one thing after the next. And, and that's what I'm trying to say in the song. And, um, it's telling you, like, you tell me who I am, not my problems, not my trials that I'm going through. You're with me in every single step of, of, of all this, but, um, you tell me who I am, God. You tell me who I am, not these problems. Because yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot that I was <laughs> that that year was a lot for me. But um, I say like you're gonna come victorious through all this because God is gonna refining you. So that's what that's the meaning of the song. Problems don't define you. God does. Amen. Amen. What was it like working with V Rose? Um. It was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I remember I saw that she had posted that she was start she was gonna be doing independent features. So I was like, okay, let me let me ask how much uh, it would be to actually. I love I love her music. I always like love her music. It's like I was like so girly, so like pop <laughs> and stuff. And I even saw her when she came. I think she came one time here to the to my area to the valley. And um, just doing a song with her, I was just like, this will be such an amazing song. And I remember reaching out to her and um, le- letting her know about the idea of the song. And she's like, yes, I can really, we can really uh, speak a message on this. Like, and um, I was saying it more like, oh, I, when you feel unworthy, um, something in those lines. And, and she, I didn't even have the title of the song, which is I'm great, right? I didn't have the title of the song. I wasn't sure what I wanted to call it yet. But as I was praying, um, God was showing me something like that. Like, um, I'm great because I made you great. Like, you know, you're great because I made you great. God's saying that, right? And um, she actually came up with the title. And I was just like, it, it, it like all tied in and into. And I was able to, I was able to share. Because I wasn't even, I, at first, I wasn't even going to say like my whole story. I had it more leaning towards another direction, but as, as she was, as we were writing and, and praying and it's just like, everything came together. And I was just so, I was just so like, wow, <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. You did great on that as well. Is there any added pressure when you're working with the artists like that? Uh, okay. Um, I really believe that you have to be like prepared like be, be prepared I, that's what will be one of my advice um you don't want to go there and be like okay i want to write about this i don't have anything written <laughs> like i really believe that you need to be prepared and and uh just be on time like be organized with your time and, and everything that you're doing um 
but I mean, she was really good. She was really good in, in responding and and um and taking the ideas and and fixing it and stuff like that. She was she was really good. But for hey. real, it's for preparation. <laughs> Amen. How do you balance your faith and your music career? So um so lately I've been getting a lot of like different like shows and stuff to do. So I to balance in both i've been i've been trying to read more the word having time the quiet time that i need because you really need that in order to pour out god needs to pour into you and um it's just been it's just been great that that these opportunities have come out and and god's been using me because i've been able to share more of my music share what he has done and um I really believe that you really need to take time to have your your quiet, your intimate time with the Lord because that's that's what it's it should be about. Like you, Him telling you what to share, right? What to say, what to when people need it. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. You are listening to the Bookkeeper Two Four Seven Podcast with our special guest, Lexley Nirvana. Stay locked in as we'll be back after these messages. Into the world of Pamela Douglas, where life is a roller coaster ride of emotions from heartache to hope. Follow Pamela's journey through love, loss, and everything in between in the pages of the Pamela Douglas story by Daryl Kemp. In the first chapter, you'll find yourself transported to the town of Birmingham, Alabama, where the Douglas family grapples with poverty and family tensions. Kemp's emotional intensity paints a vivid picture of the hardships Pamela endures and the tenacity she embodies as she overcomes them. You won't want to put this gripping and inspiring book down. So if you're ready for a journey through the depths of the human experience, join Pamela on her remarkable journey of triumph over adversity. The Pamela Douglas story is a must read for anyone who craves a powerful and moving story that will leave you breathless. For more details, sign up for our newsletter so that you can be alerted when the book drops. Now, back to the show. Este año fue muy duro, no me quiero acordar Estos sueños me activan, todo comenzó arriba Oye, sí me lo creía, pero lo que vino Después nadie lo imaginaría Planes y más planes, tickets y más tickets No siempre sucede, aunque lo quisiste Duro fue el momento, me alejé Por completo las memorias donde dejo yo cayendo No lo entiendo, no lo entiendo
Welcome back to the Bookkeeper 247 Podcast, family, where we are sitting down and chopping it up with Lex Lee Nirvana. How do you see the role of Christian hip-hop evolving in the future? I really believe that internet has really done <laughs> great. Um, it's been more like... Like you, you can do more. Like people see you more eyes, more now that it's all over the world. Like it's just awesome. Like how that can really helps the artist to grow and to connect with people, um, find those those uh, opportunities, find those uh, collaborations that you can do with with other artists. Um, now you don't even have to be in in uh, in there in person. Like you can do it over the internet, just send files and stuff like that. So I really believe like it's just growing and it's going to keep growing as we are getting more ideas more being more creative um i really i really i'm here for the ride (laughs) amen how do you see the relationship between the church and the christian hip-hop culture i i actually have a testimony about this i uh when i being a girl and then doing rap music like people sometimes will see you like as less or even as rap some i i remember hearing someone say like rap is from the devil like that's like 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 old school right but you still hear that like they don't accept it sometimes they they think it, it could be from the world but it's i really believe it's from the lyrics the real lyrics is the one that's really gonna impact um and it shouldn't matter like if it's rap or if it's country or whatever it is like hip, i i like i was we're talking about hip hop like i went through through something like that where where they told me that like and i i had to step 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 a little bit outside and be like wait what like why are you telling me that like i'm not doing this for for fame or anything like that like i'm trying to honor god with my music with what he has called me to do and And you saying that is just like, I had to pray about it too, because it's like, you have, you have your church or you have your, this person that you, your leader that you really look up to. And for them to tell you that it's very, it's, it's a hard thing. Right. But, um, it just goes back to your calling and what God has, 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 has on you, but as to put it in a separate, like they shouldn't, it shouldn't be about, about, uh, about that i know like as we as we're growing in the christian hip-hop and and the sound is getting better and everything like and then people that really love like hip-hop and rap like they they're 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 attracted to it like they're attracted to it and it's not just like oh oh it's just a whatever song or this song doesn't sound good or or whatever like they're attracted to it and that's when the lyrics is, is like what impacts so that's, right. mm-hmm, that's where that's where the lyrics impact and i really believe that um that is, they should give us a chance and it shouldn't be about all this uh people's thoughts that <laughs> about the <laughs> rap is from the devil amen and i agree with you wholeheartedly we have to pray for the church and the, and the older saints in the church but I would ask, what do you think we could do better in the Christian hip hop community to present this to the church? I really believe it with the youth. Like this is this is something that the youth are attracted to and, and, and presenting it to them, they'll be able to see that, like the church as a whole. Because, I mean, this is the sound that's right now, um, secularly and, um, if we're able to implement that in, in better ways of presenting our music and who we are and what we represent, like it can be a game changer. That's right. So we see everything going on in the world and all the chaos and everything like that and politics and everything like that. What's the best advice you can give to this generation? Yeah, there's a lot going on, like a lot, and it's just um, it's just sad to see, right? Like things that you don't think uh, will come up. I really believe that um, one thing that I could say is like 
really really to really discover yourself or know who you are you need god there like you need god in your life like he's your creator like he made you he knows what you like what you don't like he knows your weaknesses your strengths like he knows everything and and in order to really who like with uh, with everything that's going on with the i don't want to say like transgender and all that like people are are wanting to know who they really are and why are they here right and and the only one that can tell you that it, it's it's god it's the one that made you and the one that loves you and accepts you and and forgives you so um having a relationship with him and and really bringing him to your life amen so what's next for lexley nirvana so uh this new this new season that i'm in i'm i'm planning to uh i really want to do a visual for my for my music for my latest song so that's in the works and also i'm planning to release an, an album or an ep i'm not very sure yet but uh uh full reggaeton full reggaeton uh music okay yeah so i'm excited about that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and tell the family where we can find your music so my music is in all platforms spotify apple music you can find me there youtube as well um my main one of my main uh, platforms that you can <clears throat> that i really like to post and share and <clears throat> is uh instagram but i'm also in facebook and i'm in twitter um so you can find my music there connect with me yes. that'll that'll work so lexley it's been it's been great having you on the show do you have any last remarks you want to tell to the family um just want to let you know that god loves you and whatever you're going through you can actually you can give it to him like i was saying earlier surrender to him and he can help you through it if you have a dream if you have a desire to do something don't let anybody stop you um because god has placed that in your heart for a reason and um it's like i always say like your passion is connected to your purpose so don't let nobody stop you and the only one that can tell you anything is god in your life because he knows you and he loves you so i said them today amen your passion is connected to your purpose i love that amen well it's been an amazing conversation with the incredible talented and inspiring lexley nirvana before we say goodbye make sure to follow lexley nirvana on her social media accounts to stay updated on her latest projects and upcoming events you can also check out Lexley Nirvana's latest song in our space on all streaming platforms. Also be sure for future projects to pre-save to show your support and help boost its visibility in the industry. Also, don't forget to check out the show notes for links and more information on Lexley Nirvana. Thank you for tuning in to the Bookkeeper 247 podcast, and we'll catch you the next time. Peace. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye.